Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we're going to be looking at one very important fluid properties which is called viscosity. And viscosity is usually represented by dynamic viscosity. And the symbol for dynamic viscosity is mu and the unit for dynamic viscosity is Newton second per meter square and as you know Newton per meter square is also Pascal so sometimes we write it as Pascal second okay and another way to represent viscosity is kinematic viscosity and you're gonna find this term kinematic viscosity as we move along further in the topics and kinematic viscosity is represented as nu and it is actually equal to mu which is dynamic viscosity divided by density and therefore the unit for kinematic viscosity becomes meter square per second okay so that is the symbol and the unit for viscosity so you can represent viscosity as dynamic viscosity mu or kinematic viscosity no but in the physical sense what is actually viscosity okay so viscosity is basically the internal stickiness of the fluid so I'm just gonna write it here so viscosity is the internal stickiness of the fluid So what is the stickiness? Now imagine if you have two fluids which is water and also cooking oil for example. We know that in terms of density, water has higher density than cooking oil. But if you feel it between water and cooking oil, you can feel that the stickiness of cooking oil is actually higher than water. And this means that the viscosity of cooking oil is actually greater than the viscosity of water and by using water and cooking oil as comparison you can actually see the differences between viscosity and density so higher density doesn't necessarily mean higher viscosity as we've proved just now the density of water is higher than the density of cooking oil but the viscosity of cooking oil is higher than the viscosity of water so again everyone viscosity is the internal stickiness of the fluid and now let's take a look at the mathematical representation of viscosity okay so why is the internal stickiness of the fluid very important now imagine between my two hands imagine that this is the lower plate and this is the higher plate right and you have a thin layer of fluid here okay maybe a cooking oil okay and then when I put my two hands together and if I want to move my upper hand when and I want to move it to the right okay and the force that is needed to move my hand has strong relationship with the viscosity of the fluid meaning that if the fluid between my two hands is more sticky then I need to use greater force in order to move my hands does it make sense? so that is why viscosity is very important it contributes a lot in terms of drag so the mathematical representation of viscosity is tau which is the shear stress equal to mu du over dy okay so tau is shear stress okay why is shear important now if i want to calculate the force to move my hand to the right and if i move my hand like this this is actually shear force and if i know the area of my hand so i know the force and i know the area i can get the shear stress so shear stress is actually force divided by area isn't it okay so shear stress has direct relationship with viscosity so I'm gonna write this again so this is shear stress this is viscosity what is du right du is the differences in velocity between my upper hand and my lower hand so if my upper hand is 1 meter per second and my lower hand does not move meaning that the differences between the velocity of my upper hand and my lower hand is 1 meter per second so this is the velocity 
and dy is the thickness of the oil okay and if i draw the hands just now in terms of plates right i okay these are my two plates and i have fluids in the middle okay i have fluids in the middle okay And this plate is moving at 1 meter per second to the right. And if I want to calculate the force that is required to move the upper plate to the right with 1 meter per second, so this is my force, right? So, of course, force equal to shear stress times A. But my shear stress is mu du dy. So, I'm going to put it here. So, mu du over dy times A. Okay, and what is my du? Right, my du is now 1 meter per second minus 0 because this plate is not moving. And dy should be the height of the fluid, the thickness of the fluid. So this will be h times a. So basically mu times 1 over h times a. And that is the force that is required to move this plate by 1 meter per second to the right. So I hope now you can clearly see what is viscosity and what is the mathematical representation of viscosity and also how to apply this mathematical equation in terms of actual problems. Now let's take a look at different problem and how we can extract force in terms of viscosity. Okay, now let's say I have two concentric cylinders. Okay. So basically, there is outer cylinder and there is inner cylinder inside of this. Okay. There is an inner cylinder inside of this outer cylinder. And what happens is that there is a fluid that is in between these two cylinders. And if I change my view from this side, this cylinder becomes something like this. Okay, and the fluid is in between these two cylinders. Let's say that the outer cylinder is not moving, u equal to zero. But the inner cylinder is moving at velocity omega. And omega is the rotational velocity and the unit is radian per second. Now, with this problem, what I'm looking for is actually the torque required to move the inner cylinder at velocity omega, right? So you want to rotate the inner cylinder at velocity omega, but the inner cylinder has frictions because it's got the fluid around it and also the outer cylinder. So let's see how we can get this equation. Now I'm gonna take this inner cylinder and I'm going to draw another cylinder here. Okay, and this is now your inner cylinder. And this inner cylinder is moving at velocity omega. Okay, and let's say that this inner cylinder has the radius of r. And we are looking for the torque that is required to rotate this inner cylinder at velocity omega, isn't it? So the friction will come from the shear stress. Okay, and this is your shear stress. Okay, your shear stress will be coming from around this cylinder. Okay, and this is your tau, right? And we also know that tau equal to mu du over dy. But we are not looking for tau, we are looking for torque, isn't it? And in order to find torque, it is simply torque equal to force times radius. And we also know that force is equal to tau times a. Right, so force equal to tau times a times r, right? And tau is simply mu du over dy times a times r. So now let's take a look at this one by one. So mu is always mu, right? And what is the 
change in velocity between the inner cylinder and the outer cylinder. Okay, and velocity is simply omega r, isn't it? And because the outer cylinder is not moving, so our du is simply omega times r. r is the radius of the inner cylinder minus 0. That is our du. So this is mu omega r divided by dy. Now, what is our dy? dy will be the distance between the inner cylinder and the outer cylinder. This is our dy. So I'm going to call this distance h. Right, so let's just replace dy with h. And what is our area? Area is the contact surface between the inner cylinder and the outer cylinder. And if this is length, okay, so our area will be 2 pi r times length. Okay, now be very careful. You need to understand where is this area. Area is the area of the side of the cylinder. right? So it's not pi r square. It is 2 pi r times L. Okay. So I'm going to replace it here with 2 pi r times L multiplied by r. Okay. It seems like a long equation but it's actually very simple. So this is mu times omega r cubed times pi times L times 2 divided by H. Okay, and this is your final equation if you are to find the torque. Okay, of course, when you have the value of R, you have the value of omega, value of H, and the value of length, and also the fluid, then you can find what is the viscosity, and therefore you will be able to find the torque. And if you notice, for this equation, torque actually depends a lot on mu. Okay. The other conditions are fixed, omega are fixed, the radius is fixed, length is fixed, and the h is fixed as well. So basically, using the same setup, you can use this device as a viscometer. Okay, what is a viscometer? Viscometer is the device to measure viscosity. Alright, so basically, you put whatever the fluid here. Okay, let's say you put a cooking oil inside, right? And then you apply a known number of torque. Okay, you know the value of the torque that you are applying. And then you get all other parameters. You get the omega. And from that, you know that R is fixed, L is fixed, and H is also fixed. You can find out what is the value of viscosity. So this is a device that you could use as a viscometer. Now let's take a look of one viscometer example. So first of all, I'm going to draw that viscometer. Okay. And the length of this viscometer, let's say, is 300 millimeter. And the inner cylinder diameter is 200 millimeter. And the outer diameter, the outer cylinder diameter is 202 millimeter. So from these two diameters, the inner diameter and the outer diameter, immediately we know that the thickness of the fluid in between these two cylinders is H equal to 1 millimeter. So 202 minus 200 divided by 2. This will be useful in the equation later. So the torque is given and the torque that is required to rotate the cylinder is 0 0.5. 1.3 newton meter and this torque 0.13 newton meter is used to rotate the inner cylinder at the velocity of n equal to 400 rpm okay remember previously we use omega right and the unit of omega is radian per second but now what's given to us is in rpm so we need to convert this into omega right and omega is equal to 2 pi n over 60 Right? Quite an easy conversion. Alright, so let's take a look at our equation that we have got here. Right? And let's just bring this over here. So I'm just going to write it again. So torque is equal to mu omega r cubed pi L2 divided by H. And remember, and in this problem, we are looking for mu. Right? We are looking for the viscosity of the fluid. Okay? And I believe that we almost know everything. So if I just rearrange this so that mu is the title. So mu is equal to torque times h divided by omega r cubed 
pi L2. So I believe that we know almost everything. So torque is 0 0.13, H is 1 millimeter. Omega is, we need to find what is omega. R is 100 millimeter. Pi is pi, L is 300 millimeter. So this is 300 millimeter. And then two. So we basically have everything. So omega is two pi times four hundred divided by sixty. So two pi times four hundred divided by sixty. This is equal to forty one point nine radian per second. Okay. So I'm gonna put everything here. This is zero point one three times zero point. 0, 0, 1. Remember, convert everything into our standard SI unit, which is in meter. Okay, and omega is 41.9. R is 200 divided by 2. That is 100 millimeter. So this is 0 0.1 meter. Cube times pi times L is 300 millimeter. That is 0 0.3 meter. Multiply with 2. Okay, and let's find the answer. 0 0.13 times 0 0.001 divided by 41.9 times 0 0.1001 times pi times 0 0.3 times 2. Okay, and the answer is 0 0.001646. And remember, what is the unit for our dynamic viscosity? And the unit for dynamic viscosity is Newton second per meter square of pascal second i'm simply gonna use pascal dot second because it is much simpler so there you go guys this device can be used as a viscometer once you know all the parameters you can find out what is the viscosity of the fluid and for this particular problem the viscosity of the fluid we found it to be 0 0.001646 pascal second and there are many problems involving the shear stress and the force that are required that we can solve using tau equal to mu du dy so i need you to remember this equation this equation is one of the very important equation in fluid mechanics tau equal to mu du dy so don't forget to watch this video again and again until you are very familiar with the concept of viscosity okay everyone that's all from me for now thank you very much for listening i'll talk to you soon bye